If you trade options, you need to become familiar with implied volatility. So let's get started. What is implied volatility? Well, first it's important to know what regular volatility is. Some stocks move up or down rather rapidly, while others seem to trade with steadier price action. Volatility simply measures how much a stock moves up or down compared to its average price change over a specific period of time. It's usually expressed as a percentage that reflects annualized volatility over the time you measure. So let's look at an example. Here's a stock chart for UPS. If I were to measure the price movement for this one month, the volatility turns out to be 19%. But if I measure these two months, it's 22.5%. And if I look back over the six month period of time, the volatility is higher, 26.5%. What this shows is that on an annualized basis, the stock was less volatile over this one month than it was over these six months. So when you look at the past to measure what traders call historical volatility, your calculation will be different depending upon how far you look back. But implied volatility is something different. It's the expectation for future volatility that's implied by how options are priced. You may have used an options calculator to determine the theoretical fair price for an option. These calculations are often based on something called the Black-Scholes model for options pricing. This is a very complex calculation. It looks something like this, and this is only one part of the equation. But the essence of the Black-Scholes model really relies on only five different variables. These include the price of the stock, the strike price of the option, annualized volatility, time left to expiration, and the risk-free interest rate, such as the yield for Treasury notes. Let's assume for a moment that this extremely complex equation can be represented by a simple function we'll call f. So let's say we want to calculate the so-called fair value of a call option on UPS. If the stock is trading at 67.5, what's the fair value of a 70 strike call that expires in 38 days? Well, all we need to do is plug in these five variables to calculate the theoretical fair price for the option. So, do we know the price of the stock? Yes, it's 67.5. We know the strike price of the option is 70. We know it expires in 38 days. And we know the treasury rate for the life of the option, which is practically zero. But what do we plug in for volatility? As we've seen, there's no one answer to what volatility really is. Do we use volatility for the past month? past two months, past six months? Unlike the other four variables that aren't subject to debate, volatility is more of an opinion, and traders will often disagree on how a stock will move in the future. But let's step back for a minute. Is there really a need to calculate the fair value of this option? After all, we can look up the actual price of this option, which happens to be $1.10. So here's another way to look at it. What value for volatility would we have to plug into the equation so that we end up with an option price of $1.10? The answer turns out to be about 24%. And that's what implied volatility is. It's the value for volatility that solves the equation for the market price of the option, and in a sense represents future expectations for volatility. When traders think a stock might move sharply, they're willing to pay more for options, creating higher implied volatility. Here's how this impacts option prices. These are the theoretical values for various call options that expire in 60 days on a hypothetical stock now trading at $50. As option prices get higher, those prices reflect a higher implied volatility. Notice that the out of the money option, the 55 strike call is impacted most, at least in percentage terms. Unfortunately, there's no one single value for implied volatility for a specific stock. Each strike and each expiration month trade differently. Let's go back to the example of UPS. Here's a chart that shows the implied volatility for call options that expire in one month, based on the actual prices of the options. The blue arrow shows about where the stock is trading, so the at-the-money options have an implied volatility of about 25%, but the other options have different implied volatilities. Time to expiration also makes a difference. Here you can see a whole range of implied volatilities at various prices and different expirations. But traders generally tend to focus most on the implied volatility for options near where the stock is trading. In fact, you may have heard of the VIX, or the so-called fear index. 
VIX stands for Volatility Index, and it measures the implied volatility for S&P 500 index options. It weighs all those different implied volatilities to provide a theoretical implied volatility for an S&P 500 option that trades at the money and expires in one month. So that's what implied volatility is, simply traders' expectations for future volatility of a stock, index, or ETF that's based on actual option prices. How do you use implied volatility for trading? That's the subject for another video in this series.